moment a beggar became a rightful heir. He came to live within this heart of mine, and he filled me with glory divine. And it happened that very moment he saved my soul. My name is recorded in the book of life in heaven. My sins are washed away by the blood of Calvary. Since the day that the blood was applied, forever I stand justified. And it happened that very moment he saved my soul. I'll never get over this grace so rich and free. Every day that I live, the more it amazes me. How that just in one moment of time, all the joys of heaven then became mine. And it happened that very moment he saved my soul. My name is recorded in the book of life in heaven. My sins are washed away by the blood of Calvary. Since the day that the blood was applied for I stand justified And it happened that very moment He saved my soul Since the day that the blood was applied Forever I stand justified And it happened that very moment He saved my soul Amen Amen. Aren't you glad for that day when the Lord saved your soul? Amen. We'll be hearing more from the ladies this morning. Why don't we stand as we begin our time of worship this morning? There is power in the blood. Amen. Aren't you thankful for the blood of Christ this morning? Sing with me. Sing loud on verse number one. Ready? And would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, a wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, a wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb on the last? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. 
him are you washed in the blood in the soul cleansing blood of the lamb are your garments spotless are they white as snow are you washed in the blood of the lamb let's do this just give me a chord let's sing that chorus a cappella together ready are you washed in the blood in the soul cleansing blood of the lamb are you of the lamb amen that's beautiful singing thank you you may be seated ladies i was discouraged when no answer came see i prayed for years and i still saw no change I was ready to give up on my wish coming true. But when I prayed the last time, His power broke through. And prayer is just as big as God is. Prayer is just as strong as God is strong. Prayer can reach as far as God reach don't ever give up just pray we have been given a means to the throne of the one whose potential is yet to be known there is no limit as to what God can do so just keep on praying he's listening to as big as God is. Prayer is just as strong as God is strong. Prayer can reach as far as God can reach. Don't ever give up. Just pray, just pray. Don't ever give up. Just pray. to be good enough for him not knowing I could never make the payment for my sin but God in heaven came to me he used the spirit sword he answered all my questions in his word nothing but the blood for me to take away my sin I kneel beneath the fountain that cleanses deep within nothing but the blood for me the past erasing flood of justice and mercy found in nothing but the blood my heart is yielded to his call my soul has found its wings my mind is drinking in the peace that knowing jesus brings still many grope in emptiness a place i lived so long if only they could sing with me this song nothing but the blood for me to take away my sin i kneel beneath the fountain that cleanses 
deep within Nothing but the blood for me The past erasing flood of justice and mercy Found in nothing but the blood Nothing but the blood for me to take away my sin. I kneel beneath the fountain that cleanses deep within. Nothing but the blood for me, the past erasing flood of justice and mercy. Found in nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood. Isaac walked up the mountain, his father by his side, never realizing he would be the sacrifice. And when Abraham raised his hand to take his child's life, in his heart he must have wondered why. Sometimes God will take us to unexpected places but in every situation we will find God will provide beyond what we imagine so much more than we could fathom he will supply God will provide when we trust in him completely and take each step believing as a child God will provide on another hill called Calvary a father's only son was offered as a priceless gift of faithfulness and love Amidst the cry of all mankind, God reached down from above and covered us with Christ's atoning blood. No matter what our need is, God will always meet us. I know His grace will always be enough. God will provide. So much more than we could fathom He will supply, God will provide When we trust in Him completely And take each step Believing as a child God will provide Beyond what we imagine So much more than we could fathom When we trust in Him completely And take each step believing as a child God will provide He will provide Well, amen. We're so glad to have these ladies here with us today and these representatives from West Coast Baptist College. I don't know about you, but I'm already helped this morning. There's a message in every one of those songs. 
And there's a message in every, every uh, piece of music that you listen to. And I want to challenge you, man. Make sure you're listening to the right kind of music. Because the right kind of music will stir you up to do the right things. Man, that's just awesome. Prayer is just as big as God is. I hope you believe that today. And nothing but the blood. Man, as they were singing that song, couldn't help but think of this past week. This past week's been awesome at Community. I want to just give you a little bit of a review of everything that's taken place. Um, last Sunday night, Preacher preached here at this pulpit, and then uh, he took off, and he drove through the night to Tennessee to preach a revival. And uh, God blessed at that revival. He preached Monday night and Tuesday night and Wednesday night, and uh, God blessed. People were saved. Wednesday night after he preached, he drove through the night again to Ohio for a meeting. After he was done there, he drove through the night again, and he's just had a busy week, but God has blessed everywhere that he's been. Just yesterday, they had a funeral service for uh, Valerie and Ju Julie's uh, grandmother, and it was a sweet home-going service. And then here on Friday, we had a, a sweet home-going service for uh, Miss Whirl, uh, Wally's mom. And uh, we've just had so much going on this week, and God's done so much. Uh, this week, I joked a couple of times that we were going to have service at the hospital because we had so many people in the hospital this week. We had five in the same hospital. I think that's a ministry first. <laughs> Normally, they're just spread out all over. They're up in Dundee, and they're all over the place. But we had five in the same hospital. We've got a couple in rehab, and we've got uh, a couple in other hospitals. But uh, it's good to see Delory back today. She was in and out of the hospital this week, and just pray for these. Well, Tuesday night we started our VBS, and a lot of work went in before the doors even opened. And uh, Tuesday night was just a great night. God just gave us great blessings. The first night of VBS, we had 208 in attendance. We had 15 saved, including eight teenagers. We're just praising God for all that he's done. We had an average of 229 kids here each night, a high of 266. And by the end of the week, we had 26 children saved and 14 teenagers. Amen. Amen. It's exciting to see what God's doing. It's awesome. And when they were singing that under the blood, man, it was hard for me. I started seeing those pictures of those uh, teenagers and those pictures of those children flash through my mind that it's all about the blood. And it's all about the blood. Nothing but the blood. And this week, that was just an awesome thing that happened. Well, today we are thankful that you're here today. And if you're a father, you're in for a treat. If you're a father, you're in for a treat. Pastor Stancil has handpicked your gift today. And you are going to love your gift, but you don't get to find out what it is until after the service. If you're not a father, it's still a special day. We've got more music. Uh, we've got the preaching of God's word. And we're just excited about what God's doing here at Community. And we're thankful for each one that's here. If it is your first time, or first time in a long time, if you'd raise up your hand, we just want to get you a little information about our church. So good to see so many guests. There's hands all over the auditorium. Please make sure each one gets a folder. Inside of that folder, there's just a card. If you'd fill it out and drop it in the plate, we'd sure appreciate that. It's good to have my brother here. My brother Josh is here from Alabama. He works at a church up there. So it's good to have him here on a Sunday. Well, at this time, let's do this. Let's stand. Get the blood flowing again. I'm going to ask the pianist to just play through a couple of uh, verses. Let's get around and meet somebody that we haven't met. A lot of visitors here today. Go shake somebody's hand.
All right, let's sing this chorus together. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you step by step. You'll lead me. I think some of you know it. Let's try it together. Ready? Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways. And step by step you'll lead me, and I will follow you. That's good. Let's try it again. Ready? Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways. And step by step you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. Amen. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. Sing a few verses with me. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the great I Am. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty. We will bow before His throne. We will worship Him in righteousness. We will worship Him alone. He is Lord of heaven, Lord of earth. He is Lord of all who live. He is Lord of the universe. All praise to Him we give. Hallelujah to the King of kings. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lord of lords, who is the great I Am. Amen. Great singing this morning. You may be seated. Well, if you've ever been out to Southern California, and you fly out to LAX, and then go north for, oh, a good little ways, and just keep driving and driving out to the desert, and uh, literally out in the horizon... And you'll see a church and a campus, Lancaster Baptist Church and West Coast Baptist College. And uh, literally out in the backside of a desert, God is doing a wonderful, wonderful work. And I know many of you, many of us have been out to a uh, leadership conference, which just, which just took place this past week. And uh, it is a wonderful, wonderful place. And uh, I know our teams were just out there for a youth conference this year. And uh, it is a, it's a great college, uh, one that we can fully get behind and trust and endorse. Uh, it's a youth conference we can go to and not worry about what's going to go on out there when we send our teens out there. Um, the preaching is always uh, good. Um, the pulpit there is always red hot. I, I stayed up late this week and watched uh, the preaching, and I'll tell you, it is, it's a wonderful place. And just before the ladies come back and sing, uh, Brother Toby Weaver, who's been with the ministry now how many years? Paul and I were 12 years, uh, is going to come and just talk about what's on the table there in the back. Thank you so much. It's a great joy to be back at Community. We've been looking forward to this for a long time. I look down at our itinerary. We're in over 70 churches this summer, and then when I see Community Bible Baptist Church, I really get excited. This is just one of the outstanding churches in America, and I don't, I'm not just whistling Dixie and Dixie. That's a good sound, isn't it? Dixie. We're, we're from California, Dixie. We've gone to the Cracker Barrel. Can I get an amen there? Uh, we don't have that in California, and so we're, we're excited to be here, and we love your church and love your preacher. We're praying for Pastor and his family during this time. Thank you for coming out on Father's Day. I'd like you to meet my wife, Rita, if you'd stand, please. Rita and I have been married 40, almost 43 years, and we thank the Lord for that. Thank you very much. 
She's a full-time instructor and counselor uh, at the college, and, and uh, thank you for sending young people out to the youth conference. Got to meet Hayden out there and David and others, and thank you for sending them out, and we had a good time with your young people and looking forward to more coming. The Harvin, the Harvin sisters, they're the voices of praise, but the three young ladies who are singing are the Harvin sisters, and we adopted our piano player. This is, uh, uh, this is Sarah Peeler. She'll be a senior this year from Pensacola. Up, uh, just up the road about 1,500 miles. <laughs> we drove that yesterday, and you met my wife a while ago, my sweet wife. <clears throat> These three girls are sisters, and Brittany, if you'd stand, please. This is Brittany. Brittany just recently graduated. She's accepted a full-time, thank you, Brittany, a, a position at the First Baptist Church of Santa Maria, California, the church where Pastor Jim Shetler was for years. And thank the Lord, Brother Shetler is now one of our new vice presidents at West Coast. He'll be teaching all of the freshmen in their Sunday school class, and we're very excited about that. That's Brittany. Uh, this is Rebecca. Rebecca Fitzstan. Rebecca will be a junior this year and thank the Lord for her. She found a boyfriend and uh, that was a, <clears throat> we're very excited about that and thank the Lord uh, for him. And this is Rachel. Rachel will be a senior this year and she's looking for a boyfriend, okay? And, <clears throat> and, uh, and she told me to say that and so everything's fine. <clears throat> uh, and these, these three young ladies, they're sisters from, from Huntington, Pennsylvania. Their dad's a pastor up there. We thank the Lord for the Harvin sisters being with us. Very quickly, you know about the college. You've heard about it. Let me say uh, some things about what we brought, some resources. We're just here this morning, and so we'd love to be able to be a blessing to you. We'd love to serve you this morning. And uh, today being Father's Day, we're going to make a special for the mamas, okay? Because we dads wouldn't be what we are without mama. All right, and that's just a fact. And so we have lots of uh, wonderful resources. Two of the resources are The Choice is Yours for Ladies uh, by Mrs. Chapel. Life Happens, Walking with God is a Decision, a refreshingly encouraging book for ladies, as well as It's a Wonderful Life, Serving God Joyfully in Marriage and Ministry. And so, you know, ladies, if you'd like to get both of these for $20, that's on the table today, okay? That, that's a blessing. And I, I promise you, you want to do, you, you do something for, for Dad, uh, just, just be a sweet wife and pray for us and, and keep cooking and smooching. Can I get an amen there? <clears throat> All right. Then I'm, I'm, I'm here, okay? I'm, I'm not gone. I'm still here. Then these are the CDs. I've en uh, I enjoy hearing the Harvin sisters sing at college and on the road. Every time they sing, it's a blessing to me. Every time, every song, every time. And they have produced a beautiful CD. The songs that you're hearing this morning are on this CD, Family Harmony. There's six sisters total, and uh, one of them graduated from the college, and, and, uh, and Brittany's graduated. She's going to desert us too. Uh, but the beautiful CD, it's out on the table, beautifully orchestrated and professionally done, as well as this new one, Meditations of Grace by Daniel Hopkins. Those of you who've been watching the leadership conference uh, via uh, live stream, you've heard Brother Hopkins play. He's just about as good as it gets, almost as good as Sarah. But boy, that's a good one right there. And then the, the brand new CD from the college, the Wondrous Cross, West Coast Baptist College, a fabulous CD. I, I, I pray that you'll pick these three up. The CDs are $15 a piece, but today is we're going to have a Father's Day blue light special, okay? Uh, why don't you get five for 50 or get 10 for 100? And uh, if, if you'd like to pick them up, if you've enjoyed this kind of singing, wouldn't it be good to hear this all the time in your car, in your home? Well, we brought it to you. Somebody said to me the other day, Toby, I wish I could take those girls home with me. And I said, you can. Buy a CD, man. And, uh, and so... And so they did. Then, very quickly, this book, this book is special uh, to, to my heart. A couple of years ago, I went through a bout with cancer. The year before that, my dear friend Kerry Schmidt had gone through a bout with cancer. And uh, he wrote this book off script. This book encouraged me during my time. I had the chemo, lost my hair, but it's growing back. Praise the Lord. In fact, next year, it's going to be down to my shoulders. I can't wait to come back next year. Uh, off script, what to do when God rewrites your life. If you know someone who's going through a tough time, I promise you, this book I can guarantee, it's out there on the table. Pick it up. Then a, a beautiful devotional book, uh, a different devotion for every day of the year. A number of folks have already looked at that one out on the table. Guided by Grace, Servant Leadership for the, uh, for the Church. Uh, every Christian ought to read that and be a blessing for the young people. Discover Your Destiny by Brother Schmidt, another great book. Then, parents, this is a brand new book by Brother Schmidt for the parents of teenagers, Passionate parenting, enjoying the journey of parenting teens. How many of us are glad that we, that we had teens and they're now full-blown adults? Would you raise your hand? Yeah, okay. That's a blessing, isn't it? I only lost my mind twice. How about you? Okay. I wish, I had, I wish Reed and I had had this book. It would have helped us prepare our boys 
for life and, and the ministry and, and loving their wives and their families. This is an outstanding book. And if you don't like to read, at least this book is big enough you can beat the daylights out of your kids with it, okay? <laughs> but that book, I guarantee you that book will help you. And then, this is Pastor Chapel's brand new book, and The Road Ahead for Independent Baptists. You and I are independent, fundamental, unaffiliated Baptists. That's what we are. I'm a Baptist with a big B. And I uh, uh, I love this, this book, brand new book. This will encourage you. Pick this book up. Uh, it's 15, but I'm going to make it 10 today because I want you to have it. If you'll come by and pick this up, Pastor Chapel's brand spanking new book. Do you have one of these? Yeah, have, do you have it? All right, that's yours, okay? That's for you for being such a, a good guy. Isn't he a good song leader? I mean, he's the man, and I, and, I, and I love you, brother. So that's what I got. Girls, you want the girls to come ahead, come ahead now, please? Come ahead, ladies, and right before the message. Thank you. While she's playing so beautifully, <laughs> we take credit cards and checks, okay? <laughs> supplies strength unknown he will provide Christ in us our cornerstone we will go forth in grace alone every soul we grace grace alone which God supplies strength unknown he will provide Christ in us our cornerstone we will go forth in grace alone grace alone Thought and ash and hope hang 
anxiety and fear. How can I hide from thee? Can darkness hide iniquity? Oh, how can I unfaithful be when you are very near to me? When God is near, all the world seems far away. When God is near, every fear is set aside. When God is near, how can I stray? How can I falter? I'll stay upon the altar. I know my God is near. Make me know your presence, Lord, when I feel so alone. You know each trial and testing pain, the hurt that is unknown. Oh, why can I not see your hand so firmly guiding me? Oh, how can I untrusting be when you are very near to me? When God is near, all the world seems far away. When God is near, every fear is set aside. When God is near, how can I stray? How can I falter? I'll stay upon the altar. I know my God is near. When God is near, when God is near, all the world seems far away. When God is near, when God is near, every fear set aside when God is near when God is near how can I stray how can I falter I'll stay upon the altar I know my God is near my God is near my God is too big God cannot solve it there is no mountain too tall he cannot move it there is no storm too dark God cannot calm it there is no sorrow too deep he cannot soothe it if he carried the weight of the world upon his shoulders i know my brother that he will carry you if he carried the weight of the world upon his shoulders 
problem too big, God cannot solve it. There is no mountain too tall, He cannot move it. There is no storm too dark, God cannot calm it. There is no sorrow too deep, He cannot soothe it. If He carried the weight of the world upon His shoulders, I know, my brother, that He will carry you. If He carried the weight of the world upon His shoulders, Luke chapter number 10 in your Bibles, if you would, Luke chapter number 10. We love going out to leadership conference. Um, when we go out to California to leadership conference, we catch a 4 a.m. flight, and uh, we get out there, and by the time we get to the first service, we've been up about 18 hours, and uh, all we're thinking about is going to bed, but then they start that music, and they have a music program that's about an hour, and by the time that music program's over, you're stirred up, and that preacher gets up, and it's 8.30 at night, California time, and you're tired, but he tears it up, and you get fired up at leadership conference, and we love uh, that church and what they've meant to us in our lives here. I'm honored today to preach from my dad's Bible. I love my dad. I'm thankful for him, all that he did for us as young people. I want to challenge you dads and challenge myself. The most important thing we do besides serve the Lord is be that father and be that example and be that role model. We'll get to Luke chapter number 10 in just a few minutes, but as I think about churches in 2013 and I think about Christians in 2013 and I think about the culture that we live in and how we must be careful to remember that we have a purpose. Satan's greatest desire is to get and keep you off course, to keep you from doing anything for God. Satan likes to get our priorities out of order. And for us to spend time, energy, and resource on things that do not matter. If he can get you to be rooted in entertainment, if he can get you to be rooted in bad relationships, if he can get you to be rooted in materialism, if he can get you to be rooted and tangled in sin, that's exactly what he will do. And we, he will have accomplished his goal, keeping you from doing anything for Jesus Christ. For a few minutes this morning, I want to talk to you on the subject of love. The Bible speaks a lot about love. In fact, the word is used 442 times in different tenses of the word. Love is one of the most common yet misused and misunderstood words in the English language. On television, it's depicted in programs like Love Boat. 
Even Christians have a fuzzy, uh, fuzzy uh, meaning of the word, and uh, we use it in contemporary songs, and we get this warm, fuzzy feeling about love. Just on Friday night, I overheard one of our teenagers talking about the fact that they love the Jetsons. And all of, us, all of us use that word, and we throw that word around, but we need to remember that love is a subject of vital importance. It's a matter of highest priority. 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, But now abide faith, hope, and charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. That word charity means love. I believe that the greatest thing that you can do as a Christian is love the right things. Because when your love is right, your life will be right. You will use your time and your energy and your resource in the right place for the right purpose, and you'll get the right outcome. I want to ask you this question this morning. What do you love? What do you love? Whom do you love? We could answer that question this morning by finding out where you spend your time and your energy and your resource. Do you remember that first boy or that first girl that you liked? It was that first thing. And we would spend time talking with that person. We would put energy into it. We'd stay up late. We'd talk on the phone. We'd do whatever it could, whatever we could to spend time with that person and spend energy. And then you really know that you're starting to like them when you start to buy things for them. You can find out what you love by looking at your schedule and your checkbook. The Bible gives us commandments specifically on who and what we are to love. And I want to look at those for a few minutes this morning. Who are we to love? Number one, we're to love God. Deuteronomy chapter number 11 and verse 13. And it shall come to pass, if ye hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Deuteronomy 11:22. For if ye shall diligently keep all of these commandments which I command thee, to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to cleave unto him. Joshua 22 and verse 5. But take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses the servant of the Lord charged you, to love the Lord your God and to walk in his ways. Joshua 23 verse 11. Take good heed therefore unto yourselves that ye love the Lord God. Your God. Luke chapter number 10, verse 27. And he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind. Matthew chapter number 22, verse 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This morning, I'm not trying to belabor this point, but I want you to realize that there's some specific things that God's word tells us that we're to love, and we're to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, and with all of our soul, and with all of our mind. We're to be communicating with him as we read his word. It's amazing to me, we've got these cell phones now, these smartphones. You can have all kinds of apps. One of those apps that you can carry with you wherever you go is a Bible app. But I wonder on your phone, most of you probably have that Bible app. How many times are we clicking on all the apps around the Bible app, but we're not communicating with the word of we're not communicating with the Lord through the Word of God? We're to be communicating to Him. We're to be reading His Word, to be communicating in prayer. We just heard that song. Prayer is just as big as God is. Well, when's the last time you really talked to Him? When's the last time you really had fellowship with Him through prayer? We're to be consistent in service. We're to love God. But not just love him, we're to love him with all we've got. I remember my freshman year at college. One of the things I remember about my freshman year is we went to the beach a lot. After my freshman year, we never went back. We must have got sick of it. I'll never forget what, hap- what, what happened at the beach one time my freshman year. I had two friends with me, one named Mike, who I'm friends with to this day. He's a good friend. We could pick up the phone right now and commun- communicate like we talked yesterday. But Mike cannot swim. I was a good swim- swimmer, so I decided that I was going to teach Mike how to swim. But there was just no teaching Mike how to swim. He sunk like a rock every time. 
Well, this particular day, Mike was on the beach, and Brian and I were in the water. And Mike was throwing a football to us in the water. And uh, he began to throw it to us, and we would throw it back. And we started going further and further out until we were pretty far out, and we were throwing that football back and forth. Well, we got, we got caught in a current of some kind. And we were out, and we were out pretty far at this point. And both of us realized that uh, something wasn't right. And we began to swim, and we began to swim toward the beach. And we weren't going anywhere. And we didn't know that you were supposed to swim at a, a, a direct, you were supposed to change your direction and swim parallel with the beach. We didn't know any of that stuff. But we were caught in this riptide, and we were swimming, and we were giving it everything that we had. At first, we were talking, we were kind of going back and forth saying, we're not going anywhere. That's a scary feeling. For 20 minutes, we swam, and we swam hard because we began to get scared for our lives. Well, finally, we got out of that current, and I remember, like it was yesterday, we got up to that beach, and we couldn't do anything. We just sat there. We didn't talk. We couldn't stand. We were spent. That's exactly what God wants from us. When it comes to our love, there should be nothing left over. You cannot love God in money. You cannot love God in pleasure. You cannot love God in anything. We're to love Him with all of our heart. The second group of people that we're to love is we're to love our enemies. Matthew chapter number 5, verse 44, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Luke chapter number 6, verse 27, But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. Luke chapter number 6, verse 35, But love your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great. Ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. A couple of weeks ago, we heard a great message right here on love your enemies as Brother Benny Bagwell preached. And he just showed us time and time again how the Bible works when you love your enemy. And how God shows up and he gives victory and he restores. When you think about loving your enemy, you can't help but think of King David. David was set to be the next king. Saul was the current king. And David had the hand of God and the blessings of God all over him. And Saul hated David for that. And there was a period of uh, of David's life where Saul was chasing him and wanted to kill him. And during that time when Saul was chasing David, David had two opportunities to take the king's life. But he chose not to. He said, this is God's anointed. David showed love to his enemy. By far, this is one of the most difficult verses in all the Bible to live. But for the rest of our time this morning, I want to focus on this next group of people that we're to love. Thirdly, we're to love our neighbor as ourself. We're to love our neighbor as ourself. The word neighbor is in the Bible 144 times. I'm going to read a few verses that talk about the fact that we're to love our neighbor. Leviticus 19 and verse 18, just three books into the Bible, we already see this verse. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Matthew 5, 43, ye have heard that it hath been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor. Matthew 19 and verse 19, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor. As thyself. Matthew twenty two, thirty seven through thirty nine. And Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Mark chapter number 12, verse 30 and 31. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and all thy strength. For this is the first commandment, and the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Romans chapter number 13 and verse 9. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
Romans chapter 13, verse 10, Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. James chapter number 2 and verse 8, If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You do well. Galatians chapter number 5 and verse 14, For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I want to remind you this morning that loving your neighbor was not a sub-point in a message. That loving your neighbor is not a secondary thing. That it's not as important as something else. When God said love your neighbor, he meant it. Jesus said if you do two things, you don't have to worry about the Ten Commandments. If you do two things, you don't have to worry about all these other commands. If you will put me first and you will love me with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, and then you just love your neighbor. You don't have to worry about thou shalt not kill if you love your neighbor. You don't have to worry about thou shalt not steal if you love your neighbor. You don't have to worry about any of the other commandments. If you will put me first and love your neighbor, you do well. It's the royal law. Several times in those verses, it, it made the point that this is what it's all about. As a Christian, what is my duty? Love people. Love your neighbor as yourself. I think it's interesting that, that God says love your neighbor as yourself. Why would he say that? I think it's because God knew how much we would love ourselves. Man, we love ourselves, and we put ourselves up above everybody else. And God says it over and over and over again in the book. Love your neighbor as yourself. As we think about that, our first question that comes up is, who's our neighbor? And this isn't the first time this question has come up. If you'll look in Luke chapter number 10, verses 25 through 37. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, Who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down to Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him, and he bound his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said, Take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay. Which now... Of these three, thinkest thou was a neighbor unto him that fell among thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. And Jesus said unto him, Go and do thou likewise. As you think about who our neighbors are, when we think about our neighbors, we generally think about those people that live right around us. But the Bible describes here that a neighbor is anyone who helps hurting people. If hurting people are our neighbors, can I tell you that everyone is your neighbor? We're to love them all. Those that live by you, those that work by you, those that go to your school or on your team or at your church. Why should we love them? If we don't love them, we'll never reach them. If we don't love them, we'll, we'll never reach them. I want to give you just a few things that it will take if you're going to reach other people. A few things that it's going to take if we're going to love our neighbors. It's going to take time. It's going to take time. But a certain Samaritan, verse 33, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him. If we're going to do anything for anybody, if we're going to show anybody love, it's going to take 
some of our time. Notice our text, the first two walked by, and obviously in a hurry, both of these people were, were men of God, and they just walked right by, and I'm sure they were on the official business of God, and they had something important that they had to do. But if you look closely at Jesus' heart and Jesus' desires, whenever you see what Jesus wants and what Jesus cares about, it's always people. I think we get so busy in our lives. I think, I think if we could go back to this time, and, and, and this story happened in 2013, this is exactly what uh, the priest and the Levite would look like. <laughs> Have you gone anywhere lately? Everybody is like this. We're so busy. It's amazing we ask people to do things around the church, and most can, but there's so many people that are just so busy. When you're close, when you're close to Jesus, you learn what's on his heart, and it's always people. His last command to us was, go ye in all the world and tell my story to people. If you're going to love the people around you, it's going to take time, so we've got to answer this question, what in the world are we so busy doing? What are we using this time, this most valuable thing that God has given us, what are we using it doing? The number of hours a TV is on in the average U.S. home is 6 hours and 47 minutes. The percentage of Americans that regularly watch TV while eating dinner is 66%. The number of hours annually watched by Americans, 250 billion a year. We're racing home to watch our favorite show, our favorite team, and we're racing by hurting people that need hope and need help. Time is so important, it's the only thing that you can't get more of. So you better use it to please the Lord. What are you, what are you doing with your time? We get so busy that we forget what's important to God, and it's always people. Remember the story of Moses when he was in the wilderness and he saw the burning bush and he came toward that burning bush. God said, take your shoes off and come closer. And the, the Bible says that Moses took off his shoes and he ran toward the bush. You know what God had to talk to him about? His people. My people. They're in bondage. Can I tell you that God loves you just as much as he loves the lost people on your street? God loves you just as much as that lost person at work. God loves you just as much as everybody around. And if you would get close to God, you know what you'd hear him say? That person that you work with is my, my creation. My son, my daughter. Will you take time? Will you cancel some things in your schedule to reach somebody else? To show them that you love them? Man, nothing, in 2013, nothing will show that you love someone more than time. Nothing. I think about my wife. My wife had an emergency surgery seven and a half, eight years ago. And we still remember to this day every person that came to that hospital. Why? Because they took time out of their day to come see us. They showed us love. You know what this world needs? You know what your neighbors need, the people that God's allowed you to be around? They need someone to just take some time, some time to love them. Loving our, our, our neighbors will take time, but loving our neighbors will take energy. Look at verse number 34. And he went to him, and he bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. We notice here that the good Samaritan, he, he put effort into this. This wasn't just something where he made a phone call to get somebody to come and help. The Bible says that he took the time to figure out what the problems were. He took the time to figure out what the problems were and then take the action to fix the problems. And then it says he lifts him up on his own animal. I've got an almost two-year-old, and when she doesn't want to be lifted up, she's hard to lift. <laughs> Can you imagine a grown man at lifting him up? This took effort. This took work. This took, this took energy from the Good Samaritan. And you know what's going to have to happen if we're going to love our neighbors? We've got to give them time, but we've got to give them some energy. We've got to be able to do some things that will show them the love of God. 
When is the last time you put effort into anyone or, or someone other than yourself or your immediate family? This world is used to people who are putting themselves up and advancing themselves, but what they need to see is the love of God through somebody who's trying to help them. People are so caught up with love of self. This is one of the signs of the end times. Christians, we need to make an effort to help other people. I think about a couple different people, and these testimonies could be amplified over and over again. But I think about Miss Eileen Harrison, just went to be with the Lord sometime this month. I think about Brother Ken, who's been in heaven for two years. Miss Eileen worked for years in the Iwana ministry, and I bet there were times where she was tired, and I bet there were times where she didn't feel like going. I bet there was times that it just, it just wasn't going to work that week, but she just continually went, and she faithfully went, and she reached kid after kid. And on her deathbed, she said, I'm so glad I spent those years pouring time and energy into the children and serving in ministry. Think about Brother Ken. If you knew Brother Ken, Brother Ken loved to soul win. He never missed. He was there rain or shine. Well into his 70s, out two to three times a week in the heat, telling people about Jesus. In Pinellas Park, he knocked every door in the city of Pinellas Park. He knocked thousands of doors in St. Pete. Let me ask you a question. Do you think he regrets it this morning? Do you think he regrets the times that he was out in that heat and the times that he was out walking and telling people about Jesus Christ? The most important thing that you can do with your time and your energy is point people to Jesus Christ. The only thing that you can take to heaven with you is somebody else. You'll never regret the sweat. You'll never regret the energy. Man, those VBS buses this week, they were hot. But kid after kid got saved. Teen after teen, it's so worth the energy exerted, the hours of labor before the first day. Before the doors even opened, it was just hours upon hours of labor. But it was all worth it because we pointed people to Jesus Christ. It's going to take time. It's going to take energy. But if you're going to love your neighbor, it may affect your resource. It may take money. Verse number 35, And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Every one of us that's in here invests in what we love. When you truly love something, you naturally want to give to it. Here's a number for you that kind of shocked me. Americans spend $60 billion on pets per year. That's $163 million a day in America spent on pets. We need to love people. More than our pets. Fido dies and he goes into the ground. People die and they're going to live forever somewhere. Either a place called heaven or a place called hell. And we must show them by the love of God how they can escape hell and go to heaven. But they're not going to listen to us if we're not willing to give them time. They're not going to listen to us if we're not willing to give them energy. They're not going to listen to us unless we're willing to do whatever it takes to show them the love of God. Your resource stream is directly connected to what you love. Thursday morning, I was at the computer store picking up two of our computers, but I got to the store about uh, 10 minutes before it opened. So I sat in my car and I was going to do some emails and uh, catch up on some phone calls. A few minutes went by and I noticed a lady was talking to uh, one of the other shop owners. And I didn't pay much attention to it until she walked over to my car and stood by my window. I wasn't sure what to expect, but I definitely got the unexpected. <laughs> I rolled down my window about three inches, and before I could say anything, she smiled, stood up straight, and said, 65 cents, please. I promise you, I'm not making this up. I looked around thinking I was in a drive-thru. Before, before I could collect my thoughts, she said it again, 65 cents, please. Now I'm thinking that it, it costs to park where I am. So I'm looking for a sign. I'm like, maybe this is a place where I was supposed to pay to park. She said it one more time. She said, 65 cents, please. And I did what we all do in a drive-thru. I started to dig through my change. And I came up with a couple of dollars, and I grabbed a gospel track. And I said, here, I've gave you as much change as I have. But I want to give you something that's way more important. 
She stuck that change in her pocket and she started to walk away and she started to read that track. Why is it so important to love? To give time, energy, and resource. If we don't do it, we won't reach them. We've heard it a million times. People don't know how much, or they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. When you stop using all your time, your energy, and your resources on things that don't matter and start to pour your life into people, you are now accomplishing the purpose that God has created you for. You can now find fulfillment in life. This week, we start our VBS in the evenings, and we would get on the bus about 5 o'clock, and we'd be driving, and at 5 o'clock, we'd be tired because we've worked all day. And it was hot on those buses, but I loved the ride home. You pick up those kids, and they came, and they were just kind of nonchalant on the way there, but on that way home, you'd hear singing. People were excited. People were smiling. And as I looked in the rearview mirror, you could see the faces of people who, for the first time, heard the gospel. They found out that they could escape hell and go to heaven because of Jesus' gift. And they received that gift. This is three of the 14 teens that got saved. Three of the 42 total who came to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Can I challenge you this morning that we need to pour our life into people. We need to love people. We need to soul win with the purpose of reaching them with the gospel. We've got to love people. Jesus said it over and over and over again in his word, love thy neighbor as thyself. Well, who's my neighbor? Anybody who's hurting? It doesn't take long to find a hurting person. This morning I was just small talk with a young lady that came to our church. I said, how are you doing? Did you have a good week? Nope. Had a bad week. I said, well, that happens sometime. She said, Every week of my life is bad. I tell you, there's hurting people all around you. As you sit in church this morning, there's hurting people all around you. There's people in this building today that have no idea if they died, if they go to heaven or hell. There's people in this building today who struggle with addiction. There's building, people in this building today who, who are hurting because of a split relationship. There's people all around us at our workplace, our, our waitresses. Everybody is hurting. We have a responsibility that God has given us. We're to love God, and then we're to love our neighbor. Hurting people. Every head bowed and every eye closed this morning. I wonder how many people... We've walked by. We read that story and we see the priest and the Levite and how they just walked by. They saw the need, they saw the hurt, and they walked by. I wonder how many people in your lifetime, how many people in my lifetime, needed a message that we have, needed the hope that we've been given, but we just walked by. I believe the greatest thing to help our church and every church in our country is to start loving people again. To slow down enough to see the hurt. To give up some things that are so important in our life and pour some energy and resource into somebody else's life with the sole purpose of reaching them with the gospel. Maybe you're here today, you say, I'm that hurting person. And there's just so much stuff that's going on in my life right now. I can't even describe to you everything that's going on, but I'll tell you one thing, I'm hurting. If you're in here today and you say, for whatever reason, there's an area of my life where I'm hurting, will you slip up your hand? Be honest, I'm hurting. This room is full of hands. All of us have stuff. Maybe you're in this room today and you say, man, if I died today, I have no idea if I'd go to heaven. If I were to go out here on 17th Avenue and pull out and one of those city buses were to hit my car and I was to leave, I was to die, I have no idea if I'd go to heaven or if I'd go to hell. 
the Bible is very clear that you don't have to hope. You don't have to work for it. That God offers a free gift to everybody that's here. But just like any other gift, it's got to be accepted. The Bible is very clear that God loves you. But just as much as he loves you, he hates sin. And sin is the only thing that keeps you from going to heaven. Sin is the only reason that there's a hell. And sin is the only thing keeping you from going to heaven. And God saw that. And God sent his son to die for us. To take a punishment that we deserved. The Bible says it like this, but God showed his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And when Christ died on the cross, it doesn't automatically put you in heaven. When Christ died on the cross, he offers you a gift. He offers you eternal life. Say, man, I know I'm a sinner, but I've never dealt with my sin. And if sin's the only thing keeping me from going to heaven and I can escape hell, I want to take care of that. If you're in here this morning, you say, I'm not sure I'm going to heaven, but I definitely don't want to go to hell. Will you raise your hand? I'm not sure I'm going to heaven, but I definitely don't want to go to hell. Would you slip up your hand? If you raise your hand, we're going to have in just a moment what we call an invitation. We're going to sing a song, and if you'll come down and make the most important decision that you'll ever make, where you'll spend eternity in heaven. Christian, Is there somebody in your life that God spoke to you about? Maybe you know about somebody who's going through something. Maybe you know one of these hurting people. You're not sure what to do, so you haven't done anything. Maybe there's a co-worker. Maybe there is an actual neighbor, someone you live by. And you know they're lost. The Bible over and over and over again says love your neighbor as yourself as you think back to the time where you got saved man that was an exciting day in your life do you want that for other people we're to love our neighbor as ourself we had a desire to give them what somebody gave us who is it that God's laid on your heart If God's laid a specific person that you know is going through something and you know you need to help them, will you slip up your hand today? It's through the love. It's going to take time. It's going to take energy and it may take resource. Let's stand to our feet today as we get ready to sing a song of invitation. If God spoke to your heart about somebody, if maybe you're that hurting person and you want to come down, can I tell you that we have men and we have women who can show you from the Bible how you can know you're saved. We can show you from the Bible answers to life's questions. We can show you from the Bible how you can have peace, how you can have joy. As they begin to sing this morning, you come. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I find Thy power and Thine alone Can change the leper's spots And melt a heart of stone Jesus paid it all To Him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. There's nothing more rewarding than putting in that time, putting in that energy, and then seeing God just reward it. As you pour love into people, maybe you'd say, this next verse is for me. I'm going to ask God to show me some hurting people. 
and then I'm going to ask him the courage to respond. One more verse, you come. For nothing good have I whereby thy grace to claim. I'll wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary's Lamb. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. All right, if we could have our ushers come forward at this time, I want to encourage you to use our track racks. We will keep them stocked. Uh, we can get those, those cards for a penny a piece, and as many as you can give out, we'll make. And just let people know that there is hope and that there is help. And if you don't know everything to say, you can rewrite off that card and tell people there's somebody who loves you, and we'll give you time, we'll give you energy, and we want to see you come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. But well, we're going to take two offerings this morning, uh, so we'll just go ahead and just keep playing. And guys, once you uh, are done, just come back again. Um, with the second offering will be for West Coast Baptist College. Um, this is a great school, and uh, we love them and everything that they're doing, so let's uh, give to them. A lot of travel needs. They just came from Pensacola, clear to here, so we want to make sure and take good care of them. Lord, thank you for your goodness to us. Uh, bless this offering in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> time to click the first one that's good it's a good sign the second one will be good this is awesome all right guys when you're ready come on back down
Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies, for your singing. Brother Weaver, for being here. A couple of announcements we need to make. The singles have an activity coming up on the 22nd. See Brother Courtright for that. Uh, any details? Uh, junior church auctions coming up on the 23rd. Um, teen all night or on the 26th. Very excited about that. Um, we got a wedding shower for John, Allen, and uh, Stephanie coming up on July 13th. And then Caleb gets married this week. So we're excited about that. A lot of good things uh, coming up in our church. Um, before you leave... Pastor Stansel was very excited about this, and I know he's discouraged that he can't be here to uh, announce this, but we have a pen for each of our, our, each of our dads today. But this isn't just a regular pen. This is a special pen. It still writes. I just took a lot of notes with it. But this pen is actually a knife as well. <laughs> now, if you have a problem with that, it's a letter opener. If you have a problem with letter openers, we cannot help you. <laughs> okay. Let's stand together today. Let's thank West Coast for being here. Let's thank them by buying their CDs. Make sure they sell out of all their CDs. God bless you. You are dismissed.